Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining our Career Connections webinar today. We're just going to give it a few minutes for everyone to join. So just hang tight and we'll get started in a few minutes here. Thank you to everyone that's just joining us. We're just giving it a few minutes for some more participants to join and then we'll go ahead and get started. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Career Connections webinar. Just going to give it about 30 more seconds and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today for our Career Connections webinar. My name is Brent Gian Gregorio, and I'll be your host today. We're very excited to present careers in early childhood education today. We want to thank our panelists from the YMCA of Southwest Florida and the Early Learning Coalition of Sarasota County for joining us today. Additionally, we'd like to thank the Baransic Foundation for their support and hard work in advancing, advancing this important field of work in our community. Before we get started, I just want to go over a few housekeeping items. Today's session is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel within 48 hours. As well, we will send the link to the recording along with the presentations today to everyone who registered for today's session. Because this is a webinar, all lines are muted, but you can ask questions using the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. As we move through the presentation, feel free to type your questions in that Q&A box and we'll leave about 10 minutes at the end for questions. Okay, so our speakers for today, we have Charles Kane, Talent Acquisition Specialist at YMCA of Southwest Florida, followed by Barbara Papatanakis, an Early Childhood Specialist at the Early Learning Coalition of Sarasota. Then we'll move on to Q&A. After Q&A, if everyone could just stay on for one extra minute for a survey that will pop up on your screen, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, your feedback is really important as we use these surveys to help us with future webinars and programming. And then before I turn it over to our presenters, I just want to take a few minutes to tell you a little bit more about the Women's Resource Center. The Women's Resource Center has been empowering women in Sarasota and Manatee County since 1979. We have three locations across Manatee and Sarasota counties, one in Bradenton, one in Sarasota, and another in Venice and we serve over 9,000 clients a year and deliver over 7,000 hours of programming. Our goal at the Women's Resource Center is to engage, educate, enrich, and empower women of all generations. We're really a place where women can call when they're not sure where to turn to for help. To do that, we offer our clients resource advising, mental health counseling, career services, educational workshops, programs and scholarships, as well as legal and financial consultation and education. All of this is offered at a low or no cost to our clients. Since this webinar is about careers, I'll talk a little bit more about our career services. Our career coaching program offers individual assistance in preparing for a successful job search. So that can include career discovery, resume preparation, interviewing skills, networking techniques, and much more. Additionally, we offer one-on-one -on -one computer tutoring to help clients navigate online job sites, help them upload resumes, as well as help with computer basics and Microsoft Office applications. Additionally, we have three career closets, one at each of our locations where we have free clothing and accessories for women who are attending job interviews or have just secured a job and need work attire. I'd like to mention we also serve clients that may need clothing for whatever reason. 
So again, I just want to remind you, we really want to hear from you. So if you'd like to ask a question at the bottom of your screen, there's a box titled Q&A. Go ahead and click on that box and you can ask your questions. Um, and again, we reserved about 10 minutes at the end of the webinar uh, to, to answer those questions that you may have. And as a reminder, this is being recorded, so you can watch the replay in case you missed any information. We will send the replay via email in 24 to 48 hours to everyone that registered and include any flyers, presentation, and other materials from our presenters. And last plug here, we want to hear from you. So again, when the webinar ends, you'll see a survey on your screen. We Please ask you to complete the survey so we can understand how we can improve. Thanks so much for attending today and have a great rest of your day. With that, I'm gonna stop sharing and turn it over to Charles from YMCA of Southwest Florida. Awesome, thank you so very much. Uh, thank you for attending today. I really appreciate it and I appreciate the invite. Uh, my name is Charles Kane. I am the talent acquisition uh, specialist for the YMCA of Southwest Florida. Uh, and then the title goes on from there that I am a, a member of the shared services program for the, uh, the early learning directors collaborative, which is what, what I'm here to talk about today uh, is uh, focusing on uh, what the early learning uh, collaborative is, is, is working on in particular for career opportunities. Uh, we're creating a substitute teacher pool. And so we're looking forward to um, uh, talking a little bit about that. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. Uh, and it needs to be that one. All right. Can we see that? Does that work good for everyone? Yep. Looks great. Wonderful. Great. Well, thank you so very much. Again, uh, I'm uh, uh, working and partnering with the Early Learning Directors Collaborative, and so I wanted to give you a little bit of information about them and, and what it is that the project that we're working on. So the, the ELDC is a grant-funded um, initiative that is uh, being supported by the Baranzic Foundation to help introduce job seekers to um, careers in early learning childhood uh, care. Um, as um, you know, conditions post-COVID have come around, um, that a lot of career paths are, are you know, facing that that shortage of staff. And there's a lot of times that we've encountered where we think that there are folks that would be really good and have a positive impact in the field, but haven't really honestly considered it. So part of this initiative then is to help promote and support the, the concept of uh, choosing this as a uh, early uh, learning as a career choice. Um, and uh, so in doing that, we're, we're basically looking at things like helping the, the local child care centers and education centers with recruiting uh, that's where my my talent is is helping help them find folks, but also not only specifically for specific roles, but then also for as an overall to um, kind of uh, help uh, drive awareness and bring forward um, not only the, the the career path, but the importance of the career path. Uh, you know, there's a, a lot you know talking about those first thousand days out there and how much of an influence you have on people's lives uh, if you if you're dealing with them when they're very very young. So uh, we're very excited about being able to um, to help promote that. And one of the big ones that we're doing is is that we're creating a um, uh, a substitute teachers pool. One of the challenges that a lot of um, uh, uh, child care places have is, is uh, staffing and when someone calls out it can cause a lot of a lot of chaos um, but it also inhibits other things like folks being able to take vacations uh, or be able to attend professional development uh, places you know um, sorry let's try that again professional development events and they, are, they can't go because they don't have anyone to help cover in the classroom so uh, we're creating a substitute teacher pool that um, they can access and uh, request to have staff help cover those shifts. Um, and then uh, we're doing, um, uh, so, and to be clear, why it comes in as the YMCA is, is that the, the, the collaborative is still in its formation phases. So those folks that we're hiring to bring in as part of the substitute pool will be actually employees of the YMCA. They're being funded in, through the grants, through Baranzic, but um, they basically get a, in a YMCA um, employee handbook uh, that's you know uh, what you'll see as marked as on your pay when you get uh, you, you you get your direct deposit. It's all coming from the YMCA. So we're trying to be transparent about that. We're kind of the mechanism behind it, but the ELDC kind of for the stands by on its own um, a, as a different entity. So we're looking for a substitute teacher pool um, uh, 
as far as um, how we're creating this is, is that we want to create um, a pool of, of qualified and uh, teachers and support staff that are capable of going out into the Sarasota County and into those, those child care centers and being able to staff um, for an absence on any given day. Um, and how this program is, is, is working is, is basically, uh, we reach out to those sites and ask them what it is that they need. They, we have a program where they can basically say, here's, here's the shifts I need. I need someone on Thursday and Friday in the afternoon or something along those lines. The substitute teacher pool that we're creating will have access to those requests and be able to choose which shifts that they want. Um, basically the same way that uh, the school district pool works, um, they'll be able to, to choose the ones that fit well with their, their calendar, uh, with their location, and, uh, and uh, the, the convenience of those shifts you know, works out for them as well as it does for the site. Um, then the, the, the collaborative then basically function is it's kind of like the gatekeeper between the two. The, the location says, yes, we need them. Uh, the, the teacher says, yes, I want that shift. We make sure that the two get uh, married up together. And then we make sure that all the appropriate paperwork and information is transferred between the two so that it's an easy um, uh, day for both uh, to be able to be able to come in and have a, a good experience for the kids and the parents and the other staff members to have a good experience. Um, and, the t and our substitute teachers have a great experience as well. So we kind of function as that gatekeeper behind, uh, behind those actual shifts. So basically, uh, as we are bringing in this new program, uh, what we're offering is, is that um, all the training that's required through the DCF um, for your credentials will happen while you're employed. So um, you start out uh, working for us. Um, and basically doing all of your online training um, uh, in, in advance uh, before we allow you to go out into uh, the public. There's um, a training program, a mentor program, um, and a series of, uh, you know, of tests to, to make sure that we're, allowed, we're sending you out with a properly um, st uh, stacked uh, toolkit to be able to do well in uh, you know, a situation where you're kind of coming into it you know, you don't know the kids, you don't know the site, uh, but you're still confident and capable because you have the training and you know you know what to do. So uh, the positions are part-time, so they can go up to 27 hours a week. Um, the starting wage uh, is at $15 an hour until um, you've completed all your 40 hours of the DCF and then it moves to 18. Um, and then uh, the mentor program starts and then there's additional uh, opportunities for uh, uh, pay advancement beyond that. And so as far as it goes, what we're looking for really for the substitute program is we're looking for desire and passion. It's awesome if you've done early childhood before, if you've done, um, if you have, uh, you know, that in your background, uh, you know, or, you know, you have your own kids. So technically you got built in experience that comes with it. But what we're really looking for is uh, folks to have a desire and passion to be able to help and work within uh, the, uh, the, uh, the career path, uh, but, and want to be able to do it, but aren't able to commit to a, you know, a 40 hour a week job, or uh, there's a lot of outside influences that limit their time and ability, but they still really want to do it. That, those are the folks we're looking for um, beyond, you know, uh, folks with little ones that may be going to school and you have some free time in that break. Um, we're also, uh, we have two, what we're calling pioneers. Uh, we decided guinea pig wasn't a, a fair a statement for them. Uh, there, there are two pioneers that have completed through it, but both of them have previous uh, experience and it had recently retired and moved to Venice and now are working for us in that part-time capability. Um, and then uh, as far as it goes um, beyond that experience, we need to make sure that those folks that are signing up with, with us have the ability to travel. Uh, we will be covering all of Sarasota County, though initially we will be focused in Venice, but eventually the goal will be is to cover all areas of Sarasota County. So we need to make sure that the folks who are hiring have that ability to travel between those different sites. Um, as well as is then um, they have the ability to work a variety of hours and shifts. Um, and that may be that you limit are limited to that you can only do Wednesdays and Fridays from noon to six or something along those lines. That's fine, uh, but it may limit your opportunity to be able to work a full 27 hours a week if that's what you're looking for. Uh, you have to be able to have that ability to flex. Uh, but again, that's kind of the pro to it is, is that um, it can flex to meet your schedule. 
And then uh, a lot of the, the training that happens is online. And we really want somebody, uh, those folks that are, are willing and capable to uh, make sure that you are um, uh, able to, you know, to do the, the, the online work without a whole lot of like oversight. Uh, we, we're always around to answer questions and help with any technical issues. But as far as making sure that you've gone through the process and, and you've uh, acquired that information, we're really, you know, counting on those those folks that we bring into the pool to be able to kind of self-drive themselves to make sure that those, those pieces happen. Um, just for reference, because a lot of times I know people are very curious about how it all works out. It, our hiring process has kind of three steps to it. Uh, ver first, uh, uh, an interview with recruiter, which me most of the time, uh, but we do have a couple other folks that do make calls for us. It's just a kind of a quick, make sure that you understand what the job entails, you know, the hours, where you would be working and that type of stuff, uh, and making sure that, you, that we, we sound like we're going to be a good fit. Uh, and then we ask you to entertain a, a second interview, which is um, a lot of times done online for convenience for the panel and for the, uh, the potential candidates. Uh, and then we go, wow, you know, that this is someone we think that will fit well with, with the program. We're going to invite you back for a site visit and you're going to meet some of the staff and visit some of the classrooms and meet some of the kids um, and then uh, make make a determination on whether you, you're someone we would like to invite to move forward. Uh, and then if so, then you get your initial offer letters, which require uh, um, a background screen uh, through uh, the DCF as well as drug screens um, and then an onboarding process uh, that does require a desktop com computer and we try to bring that up in front. If you don't have access to one, we have them at the Y. We can make sure that you you have easy access to it and someone to help you drive if necessary to uh, dri drive the computer rather um, to, to make sure that you can fill out all the paperwork. And then the first day is a lot of tours, a lot of orientations, your I-9s and things like that. So that's kind of an overview of what we're looking for. And then what would happen after that is that you would begin your initial training. Uh, the initial 15 hours are done on site and online without uh, any direct inter, uh, contact with children. You'll be in, uh, we have some uh, study areas um, and some training areas where you would basically have, uh, we would supply you with um, a laptop and internet access and you would be able to go out and begin those trainings. Um, after the first 15 hours of those trainings are done and the testing is completed, uh, the other 25 we will be put, putting you through, but we're gonna split your time practically between uh, doing some of the online work, but then also being in the classrooms uh, between the two uh, locations uh, so that you start getting some of that initial contact and experience in the rooms. Um, and then after you've completed those, those uh, required hours, um, then uh, we have additional mentoring hours where we kind of team you up with what we consider to be the most experienced and the, the best trainers that we have for each of the kind of the um, age group. So there's infants and ones and twos and threes and fours. So as you go through it, that you will spend hours with each of those mentors who are going to be helping you uh, and giving you some, some best uh, practice tips um, and some uh, additional training and checklists and testing uh, to make sure that when you do get out into the, into the world where you're kind of uh, your own, uh, you're on your own, uh, you know, for being in that classroom that you, you don't feel overwhelmed, that you feel like you have the the skills and the capabilities because you've been trained and you know what to do uh, when you're given a certain circumstances. So um, that's kind of how the training goes. Uh, we, we're promoting it is, is that uh, it is a higher rate of pay from uh, some of the initial contact like support positions. Um, it does offer flexibility because you can work as little as one shift a week, uh, but you can work up to 27 hours depending on and, and fit them into your schedule. Uh, we do have the advantage of is that the training is paid um, and uh, so that we cover all those costs as well as pay you an hourly wage while you're taking the training. And then we also offer opportunities for you to trans transition to full time. Uh, we recognize that we're creating a lot of folks who may go out and find that full time position. What we're hoping is that while they're out traveling for um, uh, part time uh, for those uh, those uh, substitutes that they find uh, a site that they, they fall in love with, the staff falls in love with them. Uh, then we can make some arrangements to make that transfer from being our employee over to that site's employee. So uh, where to apply? I'm going to leave this in here and then send this out uh, to Brent as well if you want to include it in there. Um, we are beginning our next wave of hiring in, uh, in May, but you can put in your applications now. Um, and we will reach out to you and kind of do some of that initial contact work initially. But what our goal is, is that by the beginning of June, we have our next 
uh, kind of uh, cadre of, of staff moving through for their training. Um, I also put my contact information on here. Feel free to give me a call, send me an email or a text, whatever is the most convenient for you for communication routes. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then so yeah, I will just make sure that Brett gets these that this information as well. So, and then as far as questions go, uh, I realized I put this one in afterwards and I can't hear you and I can't see you. So, well, just put, put your information, your questions in the little box and I'll be happy to answer any of those as we go. So uh, it, it did that work well? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Charles. Um, and like I'd say, like remind everyone, I'll be sending out an email afterwards when Charles's contact info will be in there. So um, if you didn't have a chance to catch it, don't worry, you'll receive the copy of his presentation and all of the info. Um, and then that was a great reminder. We want to hear from you. So please use that Q&A box at the bottom of the screen for whatever questions you may have. Um, we've got a great panel here and want to be able to answer any questions you have regarding their programs, regarding training, um, requirements, pay, whatever it may be, we want to hear from you. Um, so thank you so much for that, for that presentation, Charles. Um, with that being said, I'd love to turn it over to Barbara with the Early Learning Coalition of um, Sarasota County, and I'm going to share um, my screen here for Barbara on... Okay, take it away, Barbara. All right, thank you for sharing that for me, and thank you, Charles, for talking about some of the things that you may hear again, but in a different way. So um, we at the Early Learning Coalition provide a lot of support for teachers that are new in the field, teachers who've been in the field, and educators who would like to advance in different ways. So we have a lot of training and support programs. That first step when you see early childhood careers is really that foot in the door, you get your DCF, Department of Children and Families training, which is that 40 hours, you can be an assistant or an aide, move into a part-time and or full-time position, depending on what you're looking for, becoming a lead teacher, and then also taking some additional trainings that would allow you to be a lead voluntary pre-K teacher. The training programs that we have all come with supports. So when you're working through that first initial training of the 40 hours, we have a program called Aspire, which I'll talk about a little bit later on that incurs those costs and gives supports while you're moving through. Um, beyond being a teacher in the classroom, whether it's full-time, part-time, or a lead, you can also advance through receiving a director's credential to become a director of a center, open your own family child care home, or also become a curriculum specialist or a program manager. And these are all administrative sides of the early education field, which we also support. We have a very strong director's connection monthly meeting with all of our area directors that we support to give them information about upcoming trainings, um, any type of grant opportunities that we offer that we're in with the um, Office of Early Learning when it comes to the grants that you've all maybe been hearing about throughout the county. There's been a lot of monies that have come down from the state over the past two years to allow us to give stipends to teachers when they participate in specific trainings or initiatives. So that is something that we keep them very up to date on what's happening in the area of legislation as well as locally for early education, if that's something that sparks your interest to move on to that area. Also, there are things in early childhood that we call specialists. There are certified trainers, whether it is training in areas that teachers are being assessed in, or if it's behavior, we have behavior coach training, as well as there can be literally literacy specialists in the field. So there's there are many options in early childhood. It doesn't just have to mean you're working in a preschool classroom five days a week. You know, it can be many things. Also, you can go on to own your own center if you feel like that's something you would want to do or own your own family childcare home. As far as higher education, if you move through these programs and then advance to a point where you would want to be a teacher of teachers, if you wanted to teach early education courses, there are paths available for that as well, as well as education research, 
policy advocate in Tallahassee this week. We had Children's Week, so there's a lot of um, lobbyists up there in Tallahassee talking about early education and why it is important and what's happening and the changes in the field. That can be something you can work toward as well. You could be a consultant. There are other support trainings that early educators use. You can work in that capacity as well as a sales representative for any of the equipment and or supply companies that preschools use exclusively. We have one real big one, Kaplan, that when you walk into a preschool classroom, a lot of the furniture you may see in that room had been provided by Kaplan. So there are, there is a little bit of something for everybody, but under that early childhood career umbrella. And if you could move to the next slide, please, Brett. Is this the correct one? It is, thank you. Okay. So. This kind of gives you that pathway. You know, we talked about all these options. This kind of gives you your, your starting point and how you can advance through if this is what you choose to do. So for entry level in any preschool child care center in the state of Florida, there's what's required is a 45 hour introductory course training. That is run through the Department of Children and Families, but we have a partnership with them through our SPIRE program, which I will talk about at the end. Then beyond those 45 hours, you can then apply to and participate in what's called a professional credential. So that has many names and many faces. You may hear it as a CDA, a national CDA, an FCCPC, which is the Florida specific, or any type of ECPC, which was the high school program that we had in a lot of our vocational schools here in the area. So that would be that next step. It's 120 hours of coursework in addition to on-the-job training. So there is a component where you'll be working as you're taking courses and you will have someone who would come in and mentor as well as do observations through that process. We here at the Early Learning Coalition are an apprenticeship approved program, which means we can facilitate this for anyone in the field and there is no fee attached to that. So instead of going and signing up for an independent online course or signing up at a technical college, which in our area of Sarasota County, there isn't an availability now, there is still one in Manatee County but you can go through us and you will get your coursework, you will get your on-job training, you will get your credential processed. And in the end on that DCF transcript, that same piece of paper that had your 45 hours, you will then now have a staff credential. That is the next step that affords you lead teacher positions as well as um, most of the time is connected to a considerable pay increase. Beyond that, you could also get your director's credential. Now, the director's credential is facilitated as a center management course that is through Department of Children and Families. There, it's a smaller course. It's not 120 hours. It's um, 16 learning modules online. It is something that there are levels of, but DCF describes that on their Department of Children and Families training page, but an initial level one director's credential is what's required to be a director in a center. If you then now have a director's credential, you have your CDA, and now you say, I think I'd like to continue. You can do that. You can go for an associate's degree. It's a 60 credit to your degree in early childhood education. Our local College, State College of Florida does offer this program. There are scholarship opportunities available to go through an advanced program, such as an associate's degree, as well as a bachelor's degree, which is 120 credit hours. The associate's and the bachelor's degree of science through SEF or any other approved college, they, if they work with the TEACH scholarship program, 
Teach will provide a scholarship for someone to advance through their AA, their BA, and most recently in the past two years, a master's degree. So you could essentially start with your entry level 45 hours with our Spire program or another program, move to your professional credential, get your director's credential and move completely through this pathway with little to no cost as an individual and come out on the other side with a degree in early childhood and many career options within the field. It's a very growing field. We talk a lot more about it now than we had in the past. You know, there's always positive and negative that come from shifts in how we do things. And what we saw in 2020 was that there were there was such a, a light on early childhood. All these essential employees still needed to go to work and their children needed somewhere to be that was safe and they were getting education. So we saw how an important piece early childhood is within our community and in the country at, at large, that it is a necessity and there's definitely room for growth in that field. So we do support the TEACH scholarship. I am an ambassador with TEACH, so I get a lot of updates with them. They, um, they have a list on their the forum website and we can share that information and follow up where you can look at which schools accept TEACH and work with TEACH so that you're able to move through this pathway with clear ideals of what you can do and where you can obtain the education necessary. So it all starts with that 40 hours. That's the beginning. So we will move on to the next slide and talk a little bit more about that. So Aspire. Aspire has been around quite a while. Um, we're moving into, I want to say it's 10 years now, and it's changed a lot over the past 10 years. Initially, Aspire was just utilized for people who were not currently employed and who could come sit in seat three mornings a week and get the 40 hour training. We've now changed that. It We still have in seat available, but we also have the ability to allow you to enroll through Inspire with us, go through those modules online, but with a lot of support. So you'll receive study guides from us, you'll receive communication, we will schedule testing for you here at our honoree training site where you come in and the test proctor will be here for you. We work within that framework of moving you along. You can take two classes and then come take two tests. If you're very motivated and you want to move through, you can take as many modules as we can get open for you and you can come ahead and test on all four, all five, all six however you feel comfortable. So it's very tailored to each individual as they move through the program. There is no problem with, say you take one module and then you have a life event happen and you need to kind of step back and take a break. That's okay, you can do that. And then we can pick back up and get you back into taking the classes and getting the testing done. The testing is not as big as it may sound to some people coming back into a field and they hear the word test and they think, oh no, not a test. It's very well done. It You have a lot of support. They're all multiple choice. They're, they're short exams. The content is covered clearly in the modules. So you're set up for success. We're not going to have you move through something where we feel like it's going to be challenging for you. We also have some accommodations we can make along the way. You know, I've had people who've come through and maybe they want to come in on a day when we only have five or six testing and they feel like that smaller environment is more comfortable for them. We can provide that. In a lot of community testing centers, they're usually on a Saturday and they can have upwards of 40 to 45 people sitting there and that may work for some, but it doesn't work for all. So we have that alternative to make it a little bit more personable and give that support as you move along. 
It really does include a lot of career counseling as you move through. We have relationships with over 150 providers in the Sarasota County area where we can assist with job placement, as well as just initial visiting. You know, you may be a parent at home of a toddler and think, I'd love to work in a toddler classroom. But we, we really like you to go to a toddler classroom and see what that looks like. So you find the best fit that works for you and works for the school. You know, that you're in line with that school's mission and you want to be a part of that. So we're going to provide you with alternatives and opportunities to see what happens in the field and what that looks like. So that being said, you know, we do not charge for any of that. It is all at no charge to you, no cost. You, there's no having to pay any kinds of fees or sign up. It's just we have our ELC website, which I'll show you at the end of the presentation. There's an interest form. You can go on, fill out an interest form. You will get a call back from myself within a day or two, and we will get you set up and get you going. So that is Aspire, and that's for our initial teacher training for the 40 hours. And then if we can move to the next slide. Yeah, let me get that pulled up here. Okay. So when you go on to our Early Learning Coalition website and you see all kinds of great information, one thing that you will see is this area of professional development and all of our professional development opportunities that we support and facilitate through the Early Learning Coalition. There, um, the Aspire bubble is that kind of gold bubble there. If you were in and clicked on that, you'd see it's a free training program that guides new teachers on how to attain their 40 hours. The other bubbles can be accessed as well. Um, the apprenticeship program is what would come after Aspire. So you get your initial 40 hours, you're done with that, you're in the field, you want to get that staff credential that we talked about. Your FCCPC is embedded within this apprenticeship program, and it will help you advance within your place in your school and also give you a lot of knowledge and support with the day-to-day -day of what happens in the classroom, how to be prepared to be a lead teacher and create lesson plans and work within the framework of the class assessment, which is a very large piece of what we see in the preschool classrooms now. You may have seen a commercial for class on TV. We've just recently had those out there in the world. So class is what the classroom is assessed with through, the, through that assessment. There is a lot of class training that we offer with the Early Learning Coalition for teachers and support staff and directors. So they can be well-versed in what that assessment looks like, how those practices look in the classroom, and how they can implement them effectively. We also have a lot of training on behavior supports, you know, for teachers to see, seeing different behaviors in the classroom, what's out there in community for assessments and for supports for children who may need those things. We have those connections and that ability to help that be facilitated. So that is kind of our one-stop shop on the program page to show you all the different offerings that we have in the way of trainings. And we also have a very interactive training calendar on our website where you will see by the day of each month what trainings are available and how you can access them through that date and sign up and be a part of those trainings. So we think we have one more slide. Or was that my last one? I think that was the last one. Like there were okay. four total. Yeah. There were four total. Okay. Yeah. So that's basically the, you know, elevator speech about um, early childhood education and training. I'm sure you all have a lot of questions about where to start and if you're coming back into the field and what that looks like, but just be aware that the Early Learning Coalition is here in our community as a support for anyone considering coming into the field and who is already in the field of education. And even if you're a parent wanting to learn more about 
what happens in the preschool environment, we are a good resource for you to get that information and best help your family understand what early education is all about. Awesome. Thank you so much, Barbara. I think it's, let me stop sharing here, just really exciting to hear about all the different, you know, paid and free training programs, but just the career pathways available, right? Like you said, you don't have to just be working in a preschool. There are so many opportunities to, to get involved with this really, really important field. Um, and I think that's super exciting to hear. Um, again, we wanna hear from you. So if you have questions, please make sure you use that Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. Um, we do have a couple in there that we'll jump right into. Um, the first, I think, Charles, if you wanna take this one, it came in at sort of the end of your presentation was how long does the training take to complete um, that you guys offer for the substitute teacher program? Sure. So we had to hear pretty closely. So if um, the 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 DCF training module says that it takes two hours, then that's pretty much what we're looking for that completion rate to happen. Um, recognizing that it may take somebody a little bit longer to you know for reading or you know is not uh, as experienced using and flipping through the pages or whatnot, but they should generally take the same amount of hours. So that first initial training is going to be focus that that first 15 hours of modules is going to we expect to take close to the 15 hours and are pretty much dedicated straight for it but that the following 25 hours will be kind of uh dependent upon the individual on what their schedule is what our schedule is for to be able to mix them so that they get to have computer time and classroom time and so it kind of varies after that but the initial 15 should take close to the, ideally to that 15 mark that makes sense. Great. Thank you. Um, we have another question in here. Um, Barbara, this came up during your presentation. Um, is someone able to take sort of the beginner ELC 45 hour prior to high school graduation? Yes, they are. Um, they can take the coursework and the testing as long as they are over 16 or at 16. Uh, they could also work in the classroom, but they would be a support staff in the classroom. So for them to be alone or on their own, it, they would need to have everything completed, but they can certainly work on it. We did have a technical college program at STC, which is no longer in existence. That was a high school program specifically for um those students, junior and seniors in high school who were working through getting their 40 hours and then their staff credential, but they are more than welcome to apply and participate in getting all of that training prior to being able to be out in the workforce full time. That's excellent. I think that's great. Um, I think a question that for maybe both of you here is, you know, after applying for either of your programs, how long does it take to find out if they've been selected? Well, we, we usually concerned? get them something back within the week. So um, the, the interest forms are filled out through the website and it's um, designed to come to me when they fill them out. So as soon as someone fills something out within that week, say if they fill out an application on Monday, generally by Wednesday of that week, they'll hear something back and then we can get them more information and enrolled and get started. That's great. Charles? Uh, yeah, so uh, for, for starting right now, um, the initial reach out is usually within 24 to 48 hours, you're gonna hear back from me. Uh, but then uh, as we're just starting to ramp up, it would definitely be a little bit longer time because we'll do initial round of interviews um, and then make those selective choices. But where we sit right now, it's still a couple of months out before we go live. So I just want to make sure that, you know, this is kind of like a, a preview of it. I don't. But if you're looking for more uh, immediate positioning, you definitely want to visit with Barbara um, some more about her helping you find uh, a place that, you know, in the meantime type of deal. Fantastic. Um, I'm trying to read between the lines a little bit on this question here, but what does being able to obtain full time depend on? So I'm assuming full time employment. Um, and I know, Charles, you guys offer part time to start with maybe the opportunity to move to full time. Is that correct? 
Well, yeah. So for the most part, we would be placing them in a, in a site that has full-time opportunities. And what I can say is that I can speak uh, as well to um, full-time as far as it goes for the YMCA actually has four different early learning centers or le early learning academies. And the, most of the positions there are full-time. And so full-time yeah, depends on being able to meet a regular schedule uh, during the week. Uh, generally, if you're um, it's kind of a, a consistency issue for the kids as well is that, you know, you're in the classroom during these certain times. So when they, they show up, they know you're going to be there type of deal. So the 40 hours is really re required and focused on that level of consistency, but, and then, uh, and the training would happen throughout the process, uh, getting those initial requirements out of the way, but then being able to just train as you go, uh, is an still an opportunity for full time. That's great. Barbara, did you have anything to add to that? And most of our sites that we work with as well, um, they are looking for stable full-time employees. So they would be welcoming anyone who was interested in pursuing full-time employment. There are many opportunities within different sites and locations that have that availability as once that 40 hours initially is done, then we can move on from there and get them in the classroom and get them working. Awesome. Thank you both. Um, that is the end of our questions for you. Um, so with that, I think any last thoughts you'd like to add? Oh, we've got one more. Um, which course do you need to take prior to Aspire? There aren't any courses prior to, to that. That is the start. The only requirement other than taking that 40 hours is that they, whichever school they go to, that they do their paperwork intake, which would be the um, background screening checks and all of those requirements by the school. But other than educationally, the 40 hours is what gets you your start. That's what you need to begin. Fantastic. Um, wonderful. Um, again, sort of wrapping up here, any final thoughts or anything that either of you would like to share with our participants today? Uh, I have two that I'd yeah, love to throw out, if that's all right. Uh, so the first one is, is that, um, I, especially from someone, you know, uh, looking at it from an applicant's perspective, it may feel kind of daunting, the whole concept that we keep saying there's testing and certifications and everything, is that I want to make sure that you understand this is that they're in place for uh, the specific purpose of making sure that young children have the opportunity for education under the best conditions um, and that, that the staff that encounters and deals with them have a base level of knowledge and understanding. But don't let that, that whole concept of the testing and requirements and everything throw you off because they, there's so much support capable for doing it. And a lot of the stuff is just honestly is very common sense based. They're just, but they just need to make sure that they emphasize and say, hey, you know, don't let them juggle flaming knives, right? You know, it's like, you know, it's like that type of deal, but um, it's, uh, but yes, yeah, so don't let that throw you off. It's completely doable. It's, it can be happened under a, you know, uh, in a form that works well for you personally. There's, um, there's a, that's not, this isn't a cut, cut, uh, cookie cutter program. So I want to just make sure that folks understand this. you can do this. This is totally within your wheelhouse. Um, and then the second one that I want to throw out is, is that I cannot emphasize enough the importance of the ELC and, and, and what Barb does um, and their entire program. If you need assistance or questions or you, no matter where you are in your in your life story and your and your trail, uh, they can help you and get you to that next piece and, and open up a, a lot of opportunities. So ask a lot of questions, visit them and get that information from them because they really are a huge resource for the county as a whole. Um, and we rely on them uh, a lot. So uh, we want to just make sure that that happens. You know, saying is that, you know, we hope that some folks that maybe this this, this part-time sub teacher program works well for them. But if you need something different, do not, you know, uh, uh, yeah, do not t uh, miss the opportunity to get that support from the ELC. So I just want to throw that out as a plug. Fantastic. And we actually have a couple more questions come in here um, for you, Barbara. Is there specific enrollment periods for Aspire or is it just ongoing? Uh, it is ongoing. And that's one of the um, best parts of Aspire and of the apprenticeship program after because there is a rolling enrollment. You know, we can work with someone to get them fit in. Our test proctor from DCF 
has a schedule with us where we have her here at least once a month, if not twice a month to do testing. So if you came in on a week one and you aren't ready to test week five, we have week seven, there's tests again. So there's a lot of availability to enroll people as, as we move along. And the same with the apprenticeship program and the FCCPC that's built into that, that we can, we can enroll people ongoing. And the capacity right now, it, there isn't really a, you're not going to be turned away from utilizing the service. <laughs> We're going to make sure that we can, we can work with you and get, and get it done. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Um, all right, everyone. Well, that brings us to the end of our presentation. I want to thank our panelists, Charles and Barbara, for your time today. Thank the Brancic Foundation for their work in this field. I just want to plug one more reminder. As soon as I end the webinar, please stay on and fill out that survey for us. We really appreciate it. It greatly helps us. Um, and again, thank you everyone for joining us today. I hope you found this uh, valuable and informative and we will be sending out all the resources you saw today as well as contact information um, in our recap within 24 to 48 hours. So with that said, I hope you all have a rest of your lovely day and don't forget to take the survey. Thanks so much everyone, take care.